This building tells many tales. It, it speaks to new construction, it speaks to the introduction of new ways of doing things, but it also speaks to the old. We've got the Japanese room, got the Joseph Reed facade. We've taken the history of the faculty with us as we occupy it, and yet we've changed that history by changing the way we're teaching and the courses that we offer. So this narrative of the old threading through to the new plays out in a number of ways. When we started the demolition, we had to take down some trees. At that point, we didn't know what we would use them for, but immediately we did say, we will reuse these. We'll find some way of using them. The serendipity of finding Adam and finding that he's taken his experience here in studying Master of Architecture and translating that through into his furniture making was a wonderful opportunity. The, the fact that he was studying here in the old building not long before we demolished provides also a temporal connection. It's an immediacy here of the history and the story we're telling. So it, it's wonderful that we have an, an alumnus who has taken his learning and interpreted it into a set of materials which we then are able to use in creating this table. It's quite a complicated brief. The design initially I thought was for a typical boardroom style table, but as the um, brief developed and we worked through it, it, it really took on a life of its own and introduced a number of complexities that really changed the table and changed the course of how I was looking at it as a design. One of the really interesting discussions we had was that, okay, this is a meeting room table and it's for 12 people, but it's not going to be used by 12 people all the time. It needs to um, be able to accommodate 12 people at some times and three people and six people, and it needs to be effective in, in all those um, elements. So the main change was to change the format in a way that was became less linear, less symmetrical, and encouraged a range of different people to occupy those in the space. Uh, the hanging studio in John Wardle's building is a very striking piece of architecture. It's very complicated. There is already a lot of timber in the space. So my response was very much about engaging with that design and how my design could really sit in that space and complement the space. That in itself was quite difficult. Having the opportunity to take the timber and create it a remarkable table which people will use for generations. It's a wonderful opportunity to connect the past with the future. One of the issues that is facing a lot of people who purchase objects that have been produced out of plastics or mass production objects is that they have very little connection to the object. There's no sense of uh, relationship or ownership over this object that's something that's bought and then disposed of. By using a material that has been salvaged and has a connection to the site, connection to the land and is part of a story, um, people really are able to engage with that and connect with that object. Whenever you see an object that has been beautifully crafted and that has been made out of timber that you know uh, the history of, it kind of brings a joy. The university encouraging and engaging with local makers and trying to encourage this kind of connection and this genesis of where did the tree come from? How are we related to this object? How can we infuse this object with the meaning and significance that is important only to us? And that we will then treasure and cherish this object for the next 50 to 100 years. This is not something that we're going to throw out. I 
I really hope that the table challenges people to consider how they engage with the objects that they own and understand that quality is worth having and quality is something that takes time and costs money but it's something that imbues your life with meaning.